the top arm wrestler right now, you would die if I told you what he's using on a regular basis. For steroids. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Uh, so <laughs> For a guy like this, who went from this to this, like, do they play any active role in that transformation or the sustaining of that tissue to suggest that some of these, like, androgen receptor agonists, like, you know, an osterine is somehow conducive above and beyond the literal, like, boatload grams of shit that you're on is, like, you know, completely nonsensical. What's up guys, Derek, MarvelPlaysMartAids.com. Today we are reacting to LaVon Saganashvili, Georgian Hulk, professional advice on medications and substances. If you guys don't know, this is the top arm wrestler on the planet as far as I know. He is an absolute mutant. And I'm not saying that in any exaggeration whatsoever. The guy literally left humanity behind. I made a video about this a few years ago and showed his transformation from 176 to 396. Yeah, <laughs> he gained 220 pounds to become what is known now as the Georgian Hulk. The guy's an absolute freak and decimates essentially everyone in his way when it comes to arm wrestling. So he has a YouTube channel now, apparently, and he had on a guest known as the biological hacker, a person who helped me a lot in recent period. His advices and recommendations have improved my health and quality of workouts. In this video, we will discuss the different types of medications and substances to improve your knowledge in this area. So yeah, presumably we're talking about drug use in sport and how performance enhancement, you know, what goes into it in an arm wrestling context. So I actually have some context going into this video that some absolute nonsensical absurdity is spewed. So just <laughs> forewarning, this is why we're reacting to it today. So let's get the intro out of the way and get into the, uh, what is actually so egregious in this video. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so when he says like helping me and other athletes, I think it's pretty clear what this guy's role is above and beyond a training context if he's being brought in for a video like this it is probably to oversee blood work play a preventative medicine type role to try and prevent them from dying essentially and optimize their ped regimens that would be my best guess but let's continue because i'm sure he's going to be at least somewhat vague about like what he actually plugs in and does that, that's what I do. A unique knowledge even the subtitle thing is not detecting what he's saying. What are you saying, bro? It's <laughs> 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 All right, so educational video. Let's get into it. So I'm gonna jump ahead. They talk a lot about. Let's see where they're at. Twelve thirty. Antioxidants, MSM, anti-inflammatories. Now we're into substances uh, ten times more effective than food supplements. So let's see. B vitamins here. No. Nootropics for the brain, obviously highly useful in an acute force production context, like in arm wrestling. So let's say we are planning to produce a kind of substance. Of course, absolutely legal and as harmless as possible, named SARMs. Yeah. 
selective modulator of the androgen receptors. Da, maximum durat hune beli egaris sarme bi, sarme bi. Ano selective ori modulatori androgenuli receptori bis. Ano egaris si setikar koli. You tell me bi. These substances are ten times more effective than the classic food supplements. That's gatsile bi, gatsile bi. Tati tavi chubia. Esot kat classic ora gatsa koli dana mateps. Da, ana nai dat pakti ora tachamu word deba. And isn't any worse with its effect than so-called anabolic steroids? So this is where shit kind of goes off the rails. Soon we are going to have a spectrum of substances which will very much help you improve your athletic form and will not harm your health in any way. Now again, these are subtitles, so did they manually put these in or are these auto-generated? Like, it seems pretty specific to a point where I have not really seen any grammatical errors to make me assume that this is either well done by YouTube or, you know, they manually put it in. But either way, if he is indeed saying this, that is, uh, like, we're off to a bad start here. And by the way, the main reason I know about this is because of this thread on Reddit. Levon Seganashvili's new video contains dangerous misinformation on SARMs in the arm wrestling subreddit. And it sounds like, you know, the stuff he's saying is indeed highly endorsing and potentially even intentionally misleading, which we'll get into shortly. And by the way, this guy, for a guy to be talking about, you know, the utility of SARMs, like this guy is on like enough shit to kill 10 horses, bro. This was a, like we talked about his, uh, you know, stack to gain 200 pounds um, on the podcast a couple of years ago. And this was uh, Larry Wheels, who actually, you know, was friends with these guys and actually competes with them and practices with them and whatnot, makes videos and content with them, talking with Bradley Martin about the amount of shit that they take, specifically Levon, uh, Levon and you know, when you're talking to each other too, the likelihood is quite high. You're gonna, you know, minimize your use a little bit, at least verbally to make it not sound as egregious. That's just classic, you know, behavior. Guys will, you know, say they're using less shit than they are. They'll inflate their height sli slightly. They'll say they make more money than they do. Just like this is classic, you know, male behavior at the end of the day. And apparently even what he told Larry flat out is like, you know, maybe it's the truth, but it's enough to make him even, who's a guy who's been around tons of guys on gear his, throughout his whole life, him to get surprised. Anyone watching, literally anyone, right? The likelihood that they will be able to make a career out of using steroids, right? And pursuing any sport where they feel they have to use steroids for strongman, powerlifting, bodybuilding, for example, arm wrestling, even arm wrestlers at the top are jacked. They're enormous. They're on the top arm wrestler right now. You would die if I told you what he's using on a regular basis for steroids. <laughs> Just hearing it, you'd fucking be deceased, bro. Yeah, it's, it's insane. You, you would fall over. You know, it's ridiculous. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's not surprising, though, given this is the transformation we're talking about. Like, this is actual freakish mutation territory. So anyway, circling back to SARMs. <laughs> Have this on 1.25 times speed, by the way, so they're not like cracked out. If that's what you're thinking. Well, they might be. Who the fuck knows? No, same be done. Oh, over this. Uh, it's not quite cargy. Uh, sex with this. Like, it's not quite. 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 It's not so MK677 ibutamoran is not actually a SARM. It is a ghrelin receptor agonist, GH secretagogue that's orally active and bioavailable, quite similar to some of the peptides of old like GHRP6, GHRP2, etc. 
but orally active and has a longer half-life and will increase your GH levels in IGF-1 for sure. Is it going to be, uh, you know, is it a SARM in any capacity? No, it's not. Also not FDA approved, by the way. It is still in clinical development. This is Lumos Pharma. And this is their clinical pipeline. It is currently in phase two. Um, it's called LUM201, by the way. So this is assessing its viability for idiopathic pediatric growth hormone deficiency. And then also, interestingly enough, testing its uh, efficacy in non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Quite an interesting application. Pilot trial initiated by M Mass Gen Hospital evaluating LUM201. They are enrolling in the trial. But anyways, still not an approved compound. This is a research chemical at the end of the day. So he's not wrong, by the way, that, you know, enhanced growth factor production, as well as when you get like the full spectrum kill adult and variants from your pituitary output endogenously, there could be benefit to that for sure from a injury mitigation perspective or otherwise supporting, you know, tendons, ligaments, connective tissue, etc. However, you know, it is still self-limited by rate limiting steps in the body because it is endogenous at the end of the day. You are not manually administering growth hormone that you can regulate to some super physiologic degree. You are otherwise working within the confines of your pituitary output still. So notable, um, worth mentioning. And you can be sure as fuck these guys are blasting the goddamn hell out of actual GH. So this is a weird statement. SARMs S23 can reduce tension, like when it kind of hurts after training like a toothache. So I'm like, how did you determine this compound specifically? Like, please elaborate. There are a lot of options like S4, Andorine, Ligandrol, LGD4033, also now known as VK5211, I believe. Radarine, I'm going to assume he means uh, either Carterine or RAD140, and YouTube subtitles just like fucking blending them together or something, but he mentions all these stuff helps you to gain explosive power. And again, it's not like these things don't work, but I'll elaborate on my thoughts uh, shortly. Because remember the context going into these, no effects on health. So, combination of LGD, Rattling. <laughs> RAD140 S4 should let you gain an explosive and general power right away. So, should I let him finish? Fuck, let him finish here. So he concludes that the best combination is a SARM that has not even had human trials whatsoever to gauge efficacy or safety profile. In fact, has only been used in rodents as a potential male contraceptive <laughs> uh, option, as well as a orally active ghrelin receptor agonist. Like this is the combination that you'd want based on what, bro? <laughs> So Levon, how many varieties are there? Well, okay. Like clearly doesn't even know really what these are, kind of implying that he does not actually use them. Could be wrong on that. Actually, who knows? There's a lot of guys who don't even know what the fuck they're taking when they're actually using like full blown shit. So certainly possible he's on the, <laughs> the kitchen sink and doesn't even know. So our goal is to have a product that has no side effects. 
Good fucking luck. That's Aristotle to be the dumb one. The most studied are six types of SARMs. Ibutamoran, S23, Carterane, Raterain, so RAD140, LGD, and Andorane, and we're going to have all of them. So let's go through these one at a time, at least briefly. I have done what I would consider to be some of the most elaborate videos and articles on the internet about these compounds. And while they may be a little bit outdated at this point because they're a few years old, there really hasn't been a lot of movement in clinical pipelines or developments or anything of this nature since I wrote them because unfortunately they have just not panned out to be as promising as would have otherwise been hoped. Now, you know, MK677 looks promising, I would say for sure. Carterine was, you know, taken out of clinical development years ago. So that is not really in the discussion for, like it has human literature that supports its efficacy for sure. But at every single dosage assessed in rodent studies, it caused, uh, cancer so obviously that's kind of sketchy um and we went over you know the human equivalent dose and it's a lot closer than to the dose people are using for performance enhancement than was otherwise previously assumed everyone thought it was like oh it's like a hundred times the dose that you would be using and it's like no it's really not that far off and even then like the rodent studies if i recall correctly there was there was no establishment of like a threshold where it didn't cause cancer it caused cancer at every single dose. So it's like, you don't actually know if it, a lower dose didn't cause cancer either. Now, is that to say that it does in humans? Have I seen any evidence of this? Like we've seen fucking artificial sweeteners causing cancer in rodents. We've seen everything causing cancer in rodents. So who's to say that like, you know, goddamn anything wouldn't. So in humans, we have seen, you know, good outcomes from an efficacy standpoint and no evidence of cancer, but it's not like there was really any data to flesh out with any reasonable certainty that there is no carcinogenic risk when it comes to carterine. Really, really interesting, actually. I was looking at the uh, Wikipedia page for SARMs because this is actually where they have like a reasonable summary of things in development. And interestingly enough, the most recent update actually seems to be based on my article so that I, I feel like this almost reflects like the lack of movement in this uh, class of compounds. And when we look at Osterine, the summary of it, it is from my article. And this was really shocking. Somebody tagged me in this on Twitter. I was like, holy shit, like it actually kind of flattering, I guess, or cool. I actually don't know how hard it is to get on Wikipedia. Like I'm, maybe somebody just chucked it in and it is not hard whatsoever to like be featured as the the thing but you know it was cool nonetheless to see it because this is like where you go to look at the summary of what everything is um here we have uh basically austerine's breakdown and side effect profile which we'll get into shortly lgd4033 summary from my article pretty cool this is the article by the way if you want to go look at it and they have all the same articles for every compound on the site that go over what it is, potential clinical applications, mechanism of action, all the clinical trials. This is the actual pharmaceutical pipeline for it by Viking. For hip fractures, it was in phase two, as well as muscle wasting. I digress though. Um, basically, there was four compounds being assessed in humans or have been tested on humans. Osterine LGD4033, GSK2881078 and PF0626014. And then, you know, there's others too. And most notable probably is RID140 that was in other, but there have been updates to it. Like it had a relatively recent phase one study in humans, which we'll get into shortly for metastatic breast cancer. And the results are in as far as what, you know, efficacy it has and side effect profile. But anyways, there's like five compounds that have been tested in humans. MK has been tested as well, um, as has Carterine. But some of these compounds he's mentioning, like S4, abandoned like fucking forever ago. And it is, uh, you know, it, the efficacy measures are, it works decently, but it will literally like blind you. <laughs> this is not literally blind you, but if you've ever heard of S4 night blindness, it is, uh, it's really messed up and sketchy. Like if you guys have never heard of S4 blindness, it's literally this compound that 
works as a SARM, but your ability, the side effect that you would never, you'd be fucking terrified if you didn't know it going into using it, it becomes very difficult to adjust to darkness when you were on it. Like you stand outside and you almost like can't even see what's in front of you. It's wild. Like if you go from the outside, you're driving down the street and you pull into an underground parking lot, you actually have to slow down and almost like pull off to the side because you're not sure if you're gonna be able to adjust to the darkness under there quick enough to not like crash into oncoming traffic or something. It is a sketchy compound. No one knows why it interacts with like, I don't know, receptors and like the eyes or whatever. No one really knows why it does what it does, but it seems to go away within short order after discontinuation. But like, what a fucking sketchy compound. And to just say haphazardly that, oh yeah, it works great for, you know, strength and force production. And it's one of the most tested ones in humans. It has never been tested in humans. It has no human data whatsoever. And it was abandoned. It had r minimal rodent data and that was it. Um, as well, S23, like I've done an elaborate article in S23, being evaluated as a contraceptive and the only time it was effective as a contraceptive that was like a guaranteed outcome was when it was used concurrently with estrogen as well as a progestin, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been, I think they assessed it with estrogen as well. I forget exactly the outcomes, but I have elaborate videos if you want to check them out or the articles. Again, not tested in humans. So like some of the stuff he's saying is literally just like pulled out of his ass in order to make it seem like these things are further along, more promising, and you know, the secret. And one of the things that's kind of messed up about this too is, and I hope they covered it earlier in the video. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if they did, but jumping right to discussing SARMs. Somebody mentioned in this Reddit post that they didn't even mention basic stuff like creatine and beta alanine and whatnot before they jumped to SARMs. So if that's actually the case and they just jumped from talking about like B vitamins and stuff right to SARMs and skipped over all of the like ergogenic aids you can use that are actually legal, over the counter, tested to hell in humans, etc. Like that's, there, there's clear motive here, seemingly. That is just my objective assumption based on what I'm seeing here. What is the girl's favorite? Injectable L-carnitine, I would be shocked if that's the girl's favorite. Like what, how many girls do you know that are willing to pin their ass with a milliliter of carnitine every single day? I know very few. About six to seven grams. I think it's closer to, let's see, 4,000 oral. I think it has like a 10 to 15% bio. Yeah, like realistically, it's probably like 3.5 to 4.5 grams. Not that it really, you know, what he's saying kind of like, it's not far off, but somewhat accurate. He's talking about carnitine, by the way, if you're on audio only right now, he is saying that 500 milligram injection is equal to 6,000 to 7,000 milligrams of liquid matter and is much more effective. It's more bioavailable, of, of course, because you're like fucking mainlining it into yourself, but um, I believe it has like 10 to 12% or 10 to 15% bioavailability orally. So it's closer to like three and a half to four and a half grams um, orally. Shipping worldwide. Some companies exchange their SARMs with anabolic steroids. I would be uh, surprised if that was 
common. I would think it would just be bunk more than it would be exchanged with anabolic steroids, but um, you know, could be wrong on that. Dude, what a statement. The most significant thing is that these SARMs have no side effects whatsoever. When a sportsman is taking anabolic steroids, there are slight changes in his slash her test. On the other hand, when you're taking these SARMs, I have never seen changes in lipid profile or any complications with the liver or in the blood. Bullshit, dude. Bullshit. Literally every study at any notable dosage will have like, at minimum, like for example, this RAD study, probably the best time to bring it up. This one had 100% of patients having de uh, decreases in SHBG, had over 50% having an elevation in AST and almost as many in elevations in ALT. Total blood bilirubin levels, 27.3% had increases. Vomiting, dehydration, decreased appetite and weight, 27.3% each. Hypophosphatemia, like the, again, this is actually, by the way, an interesting study because they used upwards of 150 milligrams in three patients and 100 milligrams in 13, 50 milligrams in six. These are really fucking high dosages, not really even representative of what people are using for performance enhancement. But at the end of the day, we are seeing changes and aberrations in lipid profiles, especially HDL metrics decreasing, just a dysregulation similar to what you would see with exogenous oral anabolic energetic steroids, significant reductions in SHPG, negative feedback with HPTA suppression and people getting shut down and needing to then get on testosterone replacement thereafter or follow a PCT to then recover despite the fact that these things are supposed to be like non-suppressive which is just not the case they interact with the androgen receptor strongly in some cases and provide significant negative feedback and decrease SHBG significantly and have hepatotoxicity and a myriad of side effects that are essentially representative of like traditional anabolics. If you look at this article, and this is my summary at the time, are SARMs actually side effect free or are they just as bad as steroids? We get into the actual clinical literature and what was found at like the minuscule dosages used for like real applications in humans in a clinical setting. And you would find even like minor kind of like representations of what would be then exacerbated at higher dosages and like men using it for performance enhancement. In Austrian, for example, there was uh, small statistically significant increases in hemoglobin and hematocrit at three milligrams compared to placebo. Effects on lipids, reductions in seared, serum lipids, HDL and LDL occurred in a dose dependent manner with Austrian usage. Another study showed only reductions of HDL. We at least know for sure it has a negative effect on HDL, even at the you know clinical dosage levels. And when you see these you know higher dosages, you start to see like more skewing of the lipids in a negative direction. Natural testosterone suppression has also shown to significantly lower SHBG and serum total test levels, even at one milligrams of Austrian or higher. SHBG was always significantly impacted at notable dosages. Suppression of LH and FSH wasn't consistently proven throughout Austrian's clinical trials. However, after referencing anecdotal logs of multiple individuals, seeing blood work in the you know, mid cycle with dosages much higher than the three milligram dosages in trials, you know, we see blatant reductions in these, uh, in gonadotropins as well, seemingly in a dose dependent manner. And I just don't think the clinical studies went high enough to reflect this data. I'm sure if the human assessed tolerability studies using 22 milligrams, or I think Austrian actually went up to 100, it was LGD that went up to 22. I'm sure if those assessed for suppression metrics, you would have seen pretty significant suppression in those patients for sure. Cause anecdotally at least in people using this stuff for performance enhancement huge amounts of suppression like it is unquestionably something that interacts in a strong manner with downward pressure on gonadotropins liver toxicity metrics short-lived increases in alt to the upper limit of normal 
in one of Austrian's clinical, clinical trials. One patient had to discontinue due to an ALT going 4.2 times the upper limit of normal. And again, this is with dosages no higher than three milligrams a day. You know, men are using upwards of 20, 25 milligrams of this stuff. LGD, um, you know, minor effect on lipids, had a negative effect on HDL, as you would imagine. Kind of the same stuff across the board at the end of the day. Liver toxicity metrics were like, not that problematic at the dosages used in clinical trials in humans, like one milligram of LGD. But once you start to get to like, you know, performance enhancement, like five, 10 plus milligram territory of what people are using, which it's kind of arguable, like, do you even need that much? You know, what, you know, what's the actual effective dose or minimum effective dose? You know, these things at the end of the day are not benign and side effect free as being strongly, not just suggested, like literally stated as fact, this is such an innovation that has a very good effect and no downsides. Like, bro, just spewing nonsense. Like what's crazy is it almost seems like some of these uh, foreign channels or countries, they are almost like years behind the states or Western, I don't know, English speaking audiences or something where they can get away with saying stuff for marketing material that is like the equivalent of what would get shit on nowadays here but otherwise would like skate by 10 years ago. Like it's, it's almost just like it's a different time over there and they have not yet, you know, had the education at scale of people watching their channels and people who are interested in this stuff. Like no one's really looked into it. So no one has really educated themselves about, you know, what they're ingesting to the degree that we have on, you know, this area of the planet. So he can just like lie like right to the fucking camera and seemingly no one really knows better. Like some of the top comments, love the transparency of Levon. This is the way to gain even more respect. At least in my eyes, I respect you even more now. Let's see. For those who, this is an interesting one. For those who didn't watch the entire video, he is basically starting to sell SARMs. Yes, he is open. He's opened up about his drug use, but he always has. His main goal with this video is starting to sell SARMs, telling that it doesn't do any harm to your health. That's what the other dude was claiming. Such an irresponsible decision. SARMs are a new type of doping drug, and yes, they do have health risks, like estrogen crash, which might be related to his recent injury, since estrogen is crucial for tendon health. Big fan of him here, and that's why the truth must be said. He is wrong here, at least if they said SARMs weren't harmless and have like the same risks of normal steroids, but they're hiding that, selling it like it was in a vitamin or something like that. Hit the nail on the head. Yeah, so it's tough because it's like, is this guy even aware? I imagine he would be aware to some degree like what the truth is and or he just wants to bury his head in the sand. I don't know, but this guy definitely knows what the fuck he's doing. Imagine asserting that a castration drug meant to shut you down and literally impede fertility to the point that you have no viable testosterone production in your testicles and sperm is going to be enhancing of anaerobic capacity to some degree that there's not going to be a net negative impact on health either downstream to the estrogen shut down to the like everything that comes along with that statement let's use a literal preclinical rodent studied in like one fucking study castration drug is what it is being you know evaluated for with carterine to provide the highest level of stamina like imagine what happens to your hematology profile too long term if you are shutting yourself down with this when you have no significant androgen input to actually stimulate erythropoiesis too no estrogen production like this is just a marketing spiel being you know masquerading as advice
S4 is more targeted for power. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, you're just making shit up. This one is a little bit of 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 a Pitkim <laughs> You know what is not going to help your pain in your tendons, joints, etc. is having zero estrogen, bro. SARMs is for those who don't want to use steroids and want to train with more natural weight. Which I think is a clever choice. <laughs> Almost the same effect as steroids can give, but with zero damage for your health. Like, this is 10 years ago shit. <laughs> the superiority of our product, as if you have, like, created the fucking SARM yourself and didn't just buy raw materials from China and package it up, taking the information that has been, you know, gathered from pharmaceutical companies that spent millions of dollars developing these compounds. Now we're just going to sell it ourselves and lie about what it does and, you know, make a bunch of money. Like so much, like, it just, so, it would have been one thing if he was going to be like, yeah, like we believe in this because of fill in the blank reason. And it still is, you know, something to keep an eye on, like the side effect profile and whatnot, but just like totally just not no regard for the, uh, the truth whatsoever, just uh, full blown marketing mode. <laughs> Tell me you're on them, bro. Let's see. I mean, I don't recommend that seat. Um, in the room, uh, oh. Oh, no. by the way, I'm not suggesting that they don't work. In fact, they do work. It's just the degree to which they work for a guy like this who went from this to this. Like, do they play any active role in that transformation or the sustaining of that tissue or providing any benefit above? Like, I could see MK, it's like a stimulator of appetite potentially, cartering for endurance for like training capacity reasons. But, like, to suggest that some of these like androgen receptor agonists like you know an osterine is somehow conducive above and beyond the literal like boatload grams of shit that you're on is like you know completely nonsensical to suggest that it has any like meaningful impact on this mutation like this is meant for the androgen sensitive for um women and like you know with a, a hip fracture or something that otherwise can't be you can't use exogenous Testosterone, that was the whole point of the development of these different more anabolic and segregating the androgenic component of steroids trying to make things like, you know, Primabol and Anavar, like these things are trying, attempting to be all anabolic and no androgenic. And they did not successfully get there because of the sidelining of the development of these compounds in the, you know, like 70s, 80s, unfortunately. So then SARMs came into the picture with you know, like literal anti-androgen backbones of their chemical structure and other analogs of different compounds and whatnot and creating what is essentially a non-steroidal androgen receptor modulator. Unlike, you know, steroidal selective androgen receptor modulators like, you know, Trenbolone or Trestolone, like that. And ultimately, even those, the SARMs themselves have not segregated successfully the anabolic and androgenic activity. And there is a ceiling for anabolism whereby if you were a guy who, if it, if there was a situation like a female or androgen sensitive individual that otherwise needs to avoid 
certain side effects from an androgenic context, I could understand the implementation in niche scenarios. However, for this guy, he's just like a freak, like arm wrestler with no holds barred, full blown drug use. Like there is no utility really that I could wrap my head around in which putting a fucking S23 into a stack where S4 is going to be like helpful above and beyond what he is doing. ازيكم اكو كل يوم انا وين متقول كده بس هو اصلا كنت عام رمضان متر اشتغل شيء بسوالف انا ما توي زول ولد تتون اصلا كنت وادي شيء صار اصلا تعلم غير زرده دا تعلم ما كل يوم سخاف كده تودك تيجي دربات شيء بيبي بس ما قلت اتحرم زين انا على رأس اتحرم زين راك مشي لوبا نور ماشي وزلي روا وادي تتون كونسولتاسيا دا اكسي Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all of them. Social media. Maximum of all the products. Maximum of all the products. Yes, I am Malay. Thank you very much. Because I have the products. Yes, I am Malay. All right, I think we get the point. So these guys are willing to essentially misrepresent the shit out of them to their audience to sell more. Which is unfortunate because it's like it's one thing if you decide to sell stuff, but then in addition to that, to like fucking lie through your teeth about what it does, it's, you know, it's taking advantage of the audience, frankly. So it's uh, this Georgie guy, I don't know who he is or what his, uh, you know, reputation is, but it certainly doesn't look good on him to come on and say this stuff and for Levon to endorse it in the way he did as well. Like, not very transparent, bro. Unlike the top comment, which thinks this is full transparency, shockingly. Uh, if he was transparent, he wouldn't be throwing out accusations as Dennis as if he himself was natty. He spins the fact that he has been tested in the past to make it seem like he's never abused anything at any point, and that's insulting to say the least. Um, all right, so some arm wrestling uh, back and forth here. So, anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. This is a painful watch, personally, and um, horribly misleading if you want to get insight on SARMs and like what they really do, I would recommend, I don't know, going back on my channel and typing in the name of a compound. You can probably find my breakdown of it and going through every single clinical study conducted on each one. I think I covered them all essentially with exception of some of these more obscure ones like GSK and PF um, 0626014, but you know, the classics supposedly, you know, these are the ones that I did cover in pretty elaborate detail and figure I gave them a, a fair, I don't know, representation, like every clinical study, applications, utilities, where the, I don't know, clinical, clinical viability actually is. Cause it certainly is not in 396 pound arm wrestlers. I'll tell you that. So let me know what you guys think. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemoredates.com. Follow my Instagram at moreplacemoredates, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple podcasts. If you want to support the channel, check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below and subscribe. There is a thing in creator studio that says how many people are subscribed versus not. And apparently a lot of people who watch are not subscribed. It really helps the channel when you guys do. Tells YouTube, hey, recommend this video to other people who might like the content. It also puts me in your sub box. So you see stuff when I put it up and drop a sub, comment, like, helps the algorithm, much, much appreciated. And I will uh, talk to you guys soon.